This video is sponsored by Taskade, a real-time organization and collaboration platform. Make sure to check the description for a discount on your subscription. Hey everyone, my name is Vishwas and in this video, let's take a look at the roadmap to learn React in 2022. Starting on a new technology can be overwhelming if you don't have a good idea of what are the topics you have to learn. This video is intended to serve as a guideline for anyone who is planning to start learning React in the year 2022. Before we begin, let me tell you that you need to be familiar with HTML, CSS and JavaScript before starting React. If you haven't already, make sure to check the other two learning path videos. Also, this roadmap is my personal opinion and is by no means an exhaustive list of what you should be learning in React. However, having worked with React for a few years and creating content on this channel has given me a pretty good idea to suggest a roadmap for you to follow. Let's get started. I've broken down the path into three sections. Let's begin with the first section, which is the fundamentals of React. Now this section is for you if you are a complete beginner to React. You need to start with Create React App. It is an officially supported way to create single page React applications with no configuration. What that means is you can create a React app by running one line of code in your terminal. You can then run your app and have a look at the files and folders generated to get a glimpse of what React is. Once you have a React app to work with, you get started with some technical concepts. A React application is made up of reusable bits of code called components. And in React, you can create a function component or a class component. Function components are what you need to focus on in 2022. Class components can take a backseat but if you have to work with legacy applications, you're going to have to understand class components as well. My recommendation is to learn function components till you come across the need to learn class components. When you start creating components in your app, you'll soon get confused by the idea of writing HTML-like code inside JavaScript. This is what is termed as JSX and is a syntax extension to JavaScript. JSX is at the heart of every component and it lets you describe what the UI should look like. Next, you're going to come across the concept of props. Props, which stands for properties, are just arbitrary inputs for a component which play a major part in making the component reusable. For example, you create a reusable card component with a defined header and body layout, but the data that goes within each card is a prop that you can change. What you should know though, is that props are read-only. A component can never modify its own props. This is a point in time where you start learning about state. State allows React components to change their output over time, which in turn re-renders the user interface. A very basic example is when a user enters text in an input field. The data changes and the UI should reflect that change in data. Once you have a good grasp on props and state, you need to understand how to modify state. Along with that, it is also important to understand what causes a component to re-render and how to hook into those methods. So you will learn about two basic hooks or special functions, if I call it that, namely useState and useEffect. These are only applicable for a function component. If you're also learning about class components, you will also have to learn about setState and the component lifecycle methods. These are must-learn topics to get a good grip on components 
So make sure to spend some time and learn them right. Once you're able to use state to change values within a component, the next step is to leverage that state value and conditionally render the UI. There are quite a few ways to conditionally render elements in the JSX and my recommendation is to learn them all. After that, you will learn how to render a list of items in the UI and you'll also learn about the all important key prop which is required for lists. It will give you an insight into how React handles lists internally, but it is well worth knowing even if you're a beginner. Next, you will understand how to build simple forms like login and registration by understanding the concept of controlled components in React. You should become comfortable working with inputs, dropdowns, checkboxes, radio buttons, etc since building forms is pretty common when it comes to front-end applications. Finally, there is a piece of documentation on composition versus inheritance in the official docs which you should go through. As a beginner, this article will truly shape the code you write in React, so please do not skip this one. By progressing through the topics in this order, you will have a really good understanding of the fundamentals in React. The second section focuses on learning the advanced topics in React. You will start by learning about React context, which solves the problem of prop drilling. You will then learn about refs, which let you access the DOM for managing focus, text selection, etc and about error boundaries, which let you catch errors and have a graceful fallback UI if there are runtime errors. Next, you will learn about React portals, which let you render UI outside the root element of your React application. A common example is rendering modals or pop-ups. Once you've understood these topics, you should focus on making HTTP requests from your React application. You can either use the Fetch API or a package like Axios to understand how to make GET and POST requests at the minimum. Finally, you can concentrate on some of the other hooks for creating and managing refs, use memo and use callback to avoid unnecessary re-renders and improve performance, and finally, you can learn to implement custom hooks that will share logic across function components. Doing that will truly give you a complete understanding of hooks in React. Now, if you're also focusing on class components, you'll need to learn about higher order components and the render props, which are patterns to share logic across components. Last but not the least, I would recommend you go through another article in the official docs about reconciliation. The article talks about React's diffing algorithm so that component updates are predictable while being fast enough for high performance apps and is a really good advanced topic to learn about. If you've gone through this list of topics, you're in a great position. Now, I can happily say that the list of topics mentioned under fundamentals and advanced topics can be found right here in this channel and I will leave a link to that. It is a playlist with in-depth explanation which will help you answer questions during an interview. Now, once you're thorough with React itself, it is time to focus on the ecosystem. That is, other packages which play well with React and help you create awesome React applications. So let's take a look at this third section. The first thing you need to learn is about state management. You can either learn Redux, MobX, or Recoil, or probably even ZooStand and Apollo Client if you're using GraphQL. For service state management alone, you can also learn React Query which is one of my favorite packages in the React ecosystem. Next, you're going to learn about routing, how to deliver different components 
when the user visits different URLs in the browser. The go to package is React Router, but there is a new kit on the block which is React Location, and you can try that out as well. The next thing to learn about is styling React apps. You can get started with CSS in JS solutions like styled components or emotion that are really popular, or you can also go the route of Tailwind CSS, which has become increasingly popular. And if you want to quickly get up and running, you can use UI libraries like Chakra UI, Material UI, and Design, etc. But styling React apps is definitely a key topic to learn. Next, if your application has complex forms to deal with, you might want to learn Formic or React Hook Form. When it comes to testing, you'll be learning Jest with React Testing Library for unit testing and Cypress for end-to-end -end testing. Apart from these categories, there are a few things that will definitely help you if you wish to learn. First is TypeScript. This will let you add types to your React apps, which will greatly reduce bugs in your code and the auto-completion will make the developer experience much better. Another important tooling that you can have in your pocket is Storybook. If you wish to document your components, this is the package for you. Next, if you want to add internationalization to your application, you can experiment with the React i18 Next package. If you want to add authentication, perhaps use a database and also host your React application, you can go with Firebase or Superbase. Finally, you might want to focus on a few practical React libraries that will be of use in most of your React applications. For example, libraries for data visualization, drag and drop components, date pickers, skeleton loaders, animations, etc. If you've come this far, congratulations. You've learned the important bits in the React ecosystem. If you want to broaden your horizon, there are a few paths you could take a detour into. If you want static site generation, there is Gatsby. If you want static apps and server rendered apps, there is Next.js. Another option for you is Remix, which is very recent and has been gaining popularity. Finally, if you want to dive into the world of native mobile apps, you can learn React Native. So this is my take on the React Roadmap for 2022. In my attempt to make this channel a one-stop shop for everything related to React, you can find tutorials on a number of these topics I've covered here. So do make sure to check them out. But this is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you all for watching. And if you found the video helpful, please leave a like and share the video with your friends and colleagues.